All right, so we're back working on the 2002 Ram 1500. We're gonna be replacing the oil pan gasket on here today. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I have cleaned this thing in the past, so it's not just horrible. But, um, you know, it is leaking. And if you're like me, you don't like leaks, you wanna to try to get rid of them. So we're gonna be getting this replaced. And let me just show you what um, gasket I got here. Okay, so we're going to be using this this Felpro, and um, apparently this box got dropped down a couple flights of stairs before it got here today, but it, it'll be all right. It was like been a little on the end, but I straightened it back out. The oil pan's actually going to flatten it back out anyway. So here is that part number. Um, you can use, you know, other gaskets, but uh, I like Felpro. They seem to uh, do really well. Not going to need a lot of tools. I believe this is everything about we're going to need. I've just got a this extended ratchet. Uh, we've got a 10 millimeter smaller ratchet, a few extensions, 13, 15, and a couple of uh, putty knives to get this oil pan. It's going to be really stuck. Just be aware of that and just a little bit of RTV. Okay, so just to uh, give you a little look here. Uh, said I have cleaned this in the past, so it's not horrible, but you can see we got some leakage. And you know, this truck's got 200, close to 215, 215,000 miles on it, so it doesn't look bad for the amount of miles we got on here so you can see the leakage going on up here so it said not just horrible but we want to take care of these leaks you can see how it's running down the pan here now this is not as bad of a job as you would think uh, we've I've got it up on ramps, but I have Done this just with the vehicle on the ground. It's just not as Not as easy, but it can be done Okay, so first thing we're gonna get this oil drained out here. I've got uh, 13 millimeter uh, Another thing I will say I had another truck like this one and I was having oil pressure problems and uh, it's another really good thing about doing this is being able to take your oil pan down and clean all the, the sludge out of it fixed all of my oil pressure problems because <clears throat> it was really sludged up and dirty I said you get this uh, this oil pan clean and the oil will be the cleanest you've ever seen it so with that truck it was uh, just uh, you know neglecting oil changes when somebody had uh, previously owned it and it led to a lot of sludge build up in the pan and everything so it had to all be cleaned out really good okay we've got the oil drain the next thing we're going to get on is this uh, brace here that's in the way and we're just going to start these are 15s and we'll have to get on that other side and hold it in just a second it's going to start spinning on us just breaking them loose okay so on this uh, back side here we'll get our 15 on there it's going to try to spin on us. We got to hold it.
All right, we'll get on that other side. I'm going to go ahead and remove one and just leave the other so it'll hold it up. Okay, and you'll notice on this side they got this where it's hard to get this bolt out because of the exhaust. So I'm trying to wiggle it past this and There we go. Now this is the final one. Let's right, see if we can wiggle this down. Sometimes I have to pry it out. It doesn't want to cooperate. Now a pry bar would be nice, but I didn't have it handy. So here's this brace out of the way, and it's really dusty. Now this bolt right here, if you have difficulty getting it out, because I have had that with some that was just barely able to get it out, you can simply flip that thing around, bring it through the other side, and put your nut on here, and snug it down real good. Okay, well, we're back here on the back side of this oil pan. The next piece we need to get on is this brace. It goes in between the oil pan and the transmission here. We're gonna be using our 15 here as well. And I do believe that all of these bolts are the same length, but you could keep them organized so you don't get them mixed up. Okay, now we're over here on uh, this other side. Now you can see that we've got these three here. We're gonna take out this one here first because it kind of blocks you from getting to that. So whatever we have to do, we have to get an extension here. All right, I got a little bit of an extension to make it easier. Okay, now we get over here, you see we've got these lines kind of in our way, so we have to, again, we have to improvise the best we can to get in here. You know, you could use a wrench, you can get a thinner extension and come out here, which I think that I'm going to do. And another thing you can do is kind of free these up a little bit. So if you look right here, it's where it attaches to this, like one of the only studs on this, and you just give that a little tug and it'll... Pull down there. Now you don't want to go to yanking on them too much because you'll bend them, but it gives you a little bit of movement there. Okay, so you can see I'm just coming in here with this little bit of a ratchet, a uh, smaller extension, I mean. And I've got my big, my big ratchet here to get it loose. It's going to be tight initially. You're not going to get it with a small one but once I got it loose 
I'm just going to switch over to the smaller ratchet here. So I said that uh, getting those lines loose gives you that extra little bit of slack there. Okay, these up here I'm going to use my smaller extension as well just because it's easier with these lines. Okay, then we'll get these on this side and we'll uh, leave one until we get a hand on it. I don't think this is going to just drop out of here. But, yeah, it is pretty loose. So again, well, you know, on this side we don't have anything in the way tin with so it's a little bit easier. So you see how we got to get all this out of the way before we can do anything. And I think it likes to hang up on those lines over there so we'll get over there in just a second if it don't just fall out of here. Okay, so that's what I thought. Alright, so we're going to have to push those lines over a little bit to be able to slide this past that. As you can see, there we go. So there's what this piece looks like once it's out of there. Brace. Okay, now this um, little gasket piece goes in between the engine and transmission. So you should have that unless somebody is took it apart and didn't replace it and so now we're just going to get to work on uh, all of our tins and uh, before I forget I just want to say that it's not uncommon for a few of these at least to be stripped so all you can do is put it back hand tighten it with some high strength Loctite and hope for the best but we're going to hope that that isn't the case, but a lot of times they get over tightened and, and there'll be a few of them stripped. Alright, so we'll get started over here. Hopefully these aren't going to be dripping oil on me here. Okay, these aren't actually that tight. I'm hopeful that these weren't over tightened. Because, you know, the gasket does the job. A lot of times I'll tighten it down to about 50 inch pounds and call it, call it a day. It just doesn't... Oh, there goes one. Alright, so, I mean, you can see how small these little bolts are. It doesn't take a lot to snap one of those. I honestly think... 80 inch pounds would probably be pushing it. Okay, so there's our last one back here. I'm going to throw these in some gasoline and clean them up.
Now I could be wrong. It could be that somebody has replaced this at one time, and in that case, it might actually come off of here. The oil pan, at least. The gasket's not going to come off. So go ahead and get these over here. So far all these are real easy to get to. I think there's only like a few up here above this frame that are a little bit trickier, but I don't believe any of them are bad. So we're just working our way on around here. We're just up at the front. And these haven't been real tight, so I'm very happy that someone has not over tightened these. I think that my threads are going to be okay, at least so far. Okay, here's that one and only stud. We've got to get in here with a with our little 10 millimeter deep socket. And I'm just reaching over the top of this frame here with that same socket to get this next one behind that stud loose. All right, so that's pretty loose. Let's get it the rest of the way by hand. And I dropped it. All right, so you can see how easy these have been. So this is, you know, kind of what you got to work with here. I'm just coming over the top of this frame and reaching up to get that one. Okay, so now I can just get back over here with my extension easily. Come out from that cross member. Like I said, this is not going to fall down. If it did, it's going to hit the frame. But if by some miracle it's been replaced in recent years, it may not be stuck as bad. All right, so we got those out. We just got one more down here. Said I'm very happy that none of, none of these have been tight. I have taken these off where they were extremely tight and I wound up having a few stripped threads or snapping off M6s, not fun. Okay, so this is the last one. Now, as you can see, this oil pan is not moving in the slightest. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've got all of your little bolts out. Now, one of my go-to tools, and 
you got to be cautious because you don't want to go to tearing things up but sometimes I like to take and tap this all the way around and sometimes it's enough to get it to moving now it may fall if it breaks loose so get you some cardboard like I got down here your drip pans gonna be a big mess it will drip for days and days and days so we're gonna do this so I'm not trying to bend it I'm just gently tapping around what we're trying to do is break that that seal loose and let me get my uh, putty now so I want to explain something else okay so if you come up here with your putty knife and you try and don't use a pry bar because you're going to bend your pan up and it may actually make it leak so you're not going to be prying see where I'm at I'm I'm on the surface of the engine block we're not going to be prying there and the reason is because this pan or this not this pan but this uh, gasket is bolted it's held on by bolts and nuts there and you can't pry it off so where you're going to pry is in between the pan and the gasket here okay so anyways you said you're going to be prying if you're going to take your putty knife you're going to go in between the pan and the gasket not up here you're not going to do anything by doing that so that this is where you want to get your putty knife and sometimes you if it doesn't want to break loose we've got to uh, work this knife all the way around said you don't want to be prying on it because it will bend so um, I want to keep tapping at it with the uh, rubber mallet here a minute before I go to work in this thing like I said, I've had such uh, good success with the rubber mallet in the past that I, this is the first thing that I am going to attempt. But I can assure you that this is not near as time consuming. I mean, it's like these glue themselves to that gasket over time I mean it is no joke and you have to take the putty knife and you got first you got to get it started and said you don't want to get above the gas you want to be between the gasket and the pan and first of all you got to get it started and then got to work this all the way around <clears throat> until you can get it all loose and I've done this and it's not very fun but this will keep you from damaging your pan okay I'm gonna need the other putty knife this one's not quite stiff enough <clears throat> and sometimes you can take and uh, tap your putty knife just give it a little tap to get it started kind of get it started in one area and then once you usually get that corner in there you can go to breaking it loose now a good place to start is up here in the front see how I've got it start on this corner and then just go either one way or the other but this is a good place to start you can you got room to uh, tap it with your rubber mallet and get it started and then you just start working it around okay um, this usually works better with the with the rubber mallet with the uh, cast aluminum because I'm not as worried about bending them 
so I can only do so much. I'm kind of more hitting in a downward motion here. So I just want to be uh, realistic with you that it's not real easy to get this thing broken loose. And you can see I've got both of my putty knives and I've kind of broke it loose from here to here by hitting the ends of my handles come from back here behind the uh, this part of where this cross brace was kind of driving them in at an angle and I'm able to cut it loose here and I can tell that I've made progress because I can tell by the way that it sounds I can see a little bit more of a gap up there and I'm kind of like hitting downward I'm not just hitting it you know from the side I'm kind of trying to knock it down once this thing goes, I mean, it's it's going to go, it's going to fly off here. I still don't, and also you can kind of work from the other side because you're trying to break the seal loose. You can tap it a little bit from that other side. But you know, the, the, the real problem is that you've got limited room to work with up in here. And you're essentially trying to get this seal cut loose and that's you know if it was out of the vehicle it would be very easy but this is going to be the biggest portion of this job is getting the seal broke loose on this pan now I will say this if you get it broke loose down this one side it, you should have no problem knocking this off here. I've still not got it loose. The problem up here is that I have very limited room to work. So I'm trying to go ahead and just cut it all the way down this one side here by any means necessary. <clears throat> and I think it will come loose. Okay, I'm just working my way down. I'm almost down to the end there. I'm going to keep going a little bit farther said make sure that you're on the right side of that gasket on the underside of it I think I may have enough of it loose hopefully I can tell by the way that it's moving if you can see it so we've just about with this just this one side cut loose we can get the rubber mallet kind of break the seal loose on the other side. I'm kind of, like I said, I'm kind of hitting downwards. So it's just almost loose. Still holding on a little bit, though. I can feel it moving. So sometimes you can This one's really holding. It's like every other one I've took loose, though. So I've got my putty knife over here. I said you'll be tempted to want to put a pry bar on here, but don't do it. See, the, the other problem with this is like I was telling you about this gasket. It's bolted to the engine up there so it's stuck to the pan but it's also bolted so this pan really does not want to separate so I can I'm sure I've got it loose from the block but the problem is the the gasket still bolted and it's sticking to the pan so that's the trouble that I'm having here and it just it does not want to relent So we're going to keep at it here. You can see how loose it is. I mean, it's... I can move it with this. But it's still not coming off. And just because I'm underneath the gasket on this side doesn't mean it's going to turn loose on the other side. And I broke the little plastic thing off of the starter there on the end maybe somebody can
tell me what in the world that is. A little nub sticking out. Okay, I said I got it loose. I'm going to try to pull on it. Not too rough. I mean, this uh, glue, whatever they used, is unbelievable. I don't think it's even going to come loose at this without getting that other side. Okay, so I'm just on the other side. I'm using my smaller, just uh, 16 out hammer. This, this is working out a lot better because the rubber mount's just a little bit bulkier and bigger, and it's just not as easy. But you can see, I mean, I'm hitting this with a hammer and this putty knife, and it's really taking a lot to, to cut this loose. Um, I mean, I suppose you could use a, um, uh, just a uh, box knife. Be careful. You could work your way around with that. Be careful, don't cut and gouge the pan up too much. So I will say that every time that I've removed one of these, I guess I've had to cut this completely loose. So I don't know why I was thinking this time would be any different. Because you can see this whole thing is loose, but the, the uh, gasket is bolted on up here. I really don't like that. I wish I don't know. I think maybe it's better for it not to be bolted in. We just got a little more here. Okay, as you can see, I've got this completely loose on this side as well. It's still holding on to that very end down there. So it's not going to let me pop it off here until I get this end cut through right here as well. It's just holding my a little bit, but it's not letting go. Okay, so you can see what a pain this is. I mean, I had to cut it all the way through, all the way around. All right, so I've got the cardboard down here for it to drip on. We're just going to slide this out here. Just sliding it back. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. I can definitely tell this has never been removed. This thing is filthy. And uh, you can see that uh, we got the studded bolt there with a the nut on it. That holds the pickup tube as well as the the old pan so that's why it doesn't like to come loose even though we got the seal broke loose it doesn't want to come loose and I said this thing will drip forever so don't plan on it stopping the dripping and then uh, see where the pickup tube Got another got a bolt right there to remove that. So we've got this studded bolt with this nut right here. One, two, and three. So that's what's holding the old pan on. So we're gonna go ahead and get that off there. 
All right, so we're just gonna start here, I suppose. This is a 13 millimeter nut. So there's that. All right, so I'm up here at the front. I'm going to be using a 13, but I've got a smaller extension because my big one won't clear in here. So we're going to get on the bolt that's holding the pickup tube. And uh, another thing, get your uh, pan ready when this comes out. There's usually a lot of oil. Wow, that was way tighter than I would have expected. But yeah, oil dump out of here. So there's that little 13 millimeter bolt. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this one. I'm gonna have to get my big ratchet again if it doesn't want to cooperate here. All right, so we got one more after we get this one. Okay, so we got the one back here that's uh, above this cross brace we're going to get at here. And this is the last one. Yeah, you want to get a hand on everything as you get this off here as it may just go to falling. And like I said, have your um, drain pan over there underneath where that pickup tube goes up in the block there. It'll dump a little bit of oil out. Alright, let's see. Everything's nice and loose. Okay, so there's the final one. All right, let's see if we can wiggle this down here. We've got it dripping out this end. Ooh. Yeah, I figured it would just come out the other end, but it's coming out this end. All right, so there's that. Usually the O-ring on here is better than the aftermarket. Let's throw that down in there. Okay, so I'm just working this uh, down here. It's just kind of stuck onto these studs a little bit. Okay, so there we are. So we'll leave that cardboard under there. All right, so here's a look at this nasty old gasket. It's like through time and heat, you can't even see any ridges on the, the old gasket at all. Now I'll say this up here is pretty easy to clean and like I usually just give it a really good wipe down um, we don't need any RTV so I'm just gonna wipe this down really good it's not even that dirty Call this good. 
Okay, I thought I was going to get by without using any RTV, but I had a couple of places here that the um, putty knife kind of scratched it, and I'm not taking any chances. I'm just going to smear a little tiny bit of RTV right there. Everything else looks good on the rest of it. Uh, I just cleaned this up with some purple cleaner, you know, inside and out, and... Uh, it would be nice and clean. Same thing, purple cleaner. And then I rinsed it off, <clears throat> dried it out, blowed this out with the air hose real good. And so we had all the bolts soaking in some gasoline. Uh, I'm going to use the same o ring that was on here. It was just fine. A lot of times with the aftermarkets, they don't want to fit right or something. It's always a hassle. And that one there is in fine shape, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so I got my gasket ready, got the pickup tube ready. There'll be enough oil on that up there that I won't need to lubricate that. It'll be fine. And I've got the three 13 millimeter nuts ready to go. You kind of need three hands, it seems like, to get all this in place here. Okay, I'm... Um, Getting ready to set this in place. I pulled that dipstick back up. And I know some oil is dripped down. <clears throat> but um, it's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to get around these. It's pretty straightforward. Just slipping it over the studs there but I've got to get <clears throat> this end down here and try to get it in place let me get if I can get one Thirteen, maybe just to hold it temporarily. I'm gonna get over here and mess with this. All right, so I've just got that temporarily held, and we're gonna try to see if we can just work this in here. Seems to be fitting all right. We've got our. 13 millimeter bolt here. Okay, so uh, we got that in place. I'm just getting ready to tighten this down. Uh, I'm not going to torque it. I'm just going to snug it up. If he's going to torque it, um, I wouldn't probably go more than 20 foot pounds. Now before I snug these down, I'm going to make sure all of these holes around this perimeter are lining up good. I don't want it to be tight because this, once this is tightened, it's essentially going to lock it down. Okay, so essentially I've just come back here, looked straight up at the back making sure that the holes for the gasket are lining up with the threaded holes and then the same thing we come up to the front making sure these are in alignment once we tighten this and then these two this is going to be locked into place so we want those to be into alignment or we're going to have problems all right, so it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and snug these up. Like I said, if you were going to torque these, I would say no more than 
than 20 foot pounds, 15 would probably be plenty good. I'm not torquing them, just snugging them up by hand. They're not going anywhere. Okay, so we're gonna snug these up, and then after we get them snugged up, I'm gonna go back around and check it again, because once I get this, get these tied, I can't move it. So I wanna make sure that it's right before we go to trying to set the oil pan on here. Okay, now I need to tighten this one down right here as well. So that's good enough. I'm just using a 3 8 ratchet here. All right, so I'm going to go back around and check these again. Okay, um, getting ready to set this pan up here. I've got a couple of my little 10 millimeters ready. And you've seen the scratch. And uh, that I showed you that's where I put just the ever light. I mean, just a little smidge of RTV. Not a lot. Not really needed. Just in case. It's like Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will. So I want to make sure because. And you see how easy it is to gouge this. So it's very important to not get too rough. I'm trying to get one just start it on each side here just to hold it I'm just threading it by hand all right so now yeah, I've got the wrong size oh. Oh. Uh oh okay I didn't have those in good at all well let's try this again Okay. Okay, so I'm putting a little medium Loctite on these and I'm not snugging any of them down. I thought I had that in there, but I guess I didn't have it in there at all. I don't know what happened. So I was trying just to get a few threads, but make sure you got more than a few threads. Alright, so we're just going to run around here, putting these in, using a little, I said, a little medium Loctite. Now, the other important thing I forgot to mention is when you're under a vehicle, put your safety glasses on always. When that pan fell, it knocked some dirt down in my eye, and I didn't have my safety glasses on. So we're just said we're just getting these started. Uh, the pan is going to be loose until we get all of the 10 millimeters in to make sure they're going to be in alignment. So I've got all of them in I can get from this side. Uh, another thing about these little bitty little bitty bolts is they are very easy to cross thread you have to make sure you get them started by hand before you take off with a wrench they're just super easy to cross thread all right so I'm back over here on this side we're uh, getting this little studded bolt I know you can't see it there don't look like but it's the one right behind this front one here so it looks like we've got about four more bolts here if I ain't lost any so I want to get these last few in here so I've got all of the 
bolts in. I'm going to go around and I'm just kind of running them down by hand with this little screwdriver. And we're going to just kind of want to start in the middle and work your way to the outside. So just kind of start in the middle. They're nowhere near tight at this point. And just work from one side to the other in a kind of a zigzag pattern. So now we're just switching over to this side and we're just going to ensure that it's nice and flat. Right, so I'm going to be uh, torquing these to 50 inch pounds. If you're not using an inch pound torque wrench, just take your quarter inch, take your little quarter inch, just give it a little snug and call it good. But uh, we're going to be starting here in the middle, where it's about. Maybe if I got room. And I may I may take these a little bit more. They feel like they can handle. I may take it up just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take these to 75 inch pounds. I feel like they can handle it. A lot of times I'll just go 50 inch pounds. Um, I'm thinking 75 will help flatten out this gasket that got dropped prior to delivery. So I'm just working my way from the inside over to this other side and zigzagging my way all the way to each end. And on this studded one here, I'm gonna have to uh, get my deep socket before I can snug it down. pretty much got all the middle and you'll want to probably go around this a few times double check it make sure that you got it where you need it okay I was getting that studded one there okay, okay so we got them all torqued I'm going to slip this back on the stud here our trans cooler lines all right we're getting ready to get this piece back in we can clean this up okay so it's just going to slide back up here like we took it out we'll make sure that right there is pushed in and then we got to kind of grab these Lines, push them over a little bit. Now that um, plastic piece that we put on the stud, don't put that on there until you get this piece in because it's going to take away your slack. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this here temporarily. I'm going to be putting some medium Loctite on these though.
then we won't get these tight until we get the other ones in. Okay, so we got some lock tight on this one. Okay, now next we're going to work these uh, ones that are going vertical here. And again, putting the medium lock tight. Okay, we can go ahead and snug these. Snug these over here as well. And then we'll get the two on the other side. Okay, we're going to start right here torquing these to 35 foot pounds, these 15s. Run 35 on these as well. Right, so we're going to torque this to 35 as well. We still got to get that one on the other side. Now you could put all these in at the same time instead of doing it the way I did it. Um, this actually clears. It's been a while since I've done this and I was thinking it was going to be in the way, but it's not. Okay, uh, we're just getting ready to get this brace in here and other than getting some oil in it. Uh, 
I didn't bring my hammer again. All right. This side goes in real easy. Put a little white lithium on there, hoping that would help matters, but it didn't. All right, so this is the more difficult one. I'm gonna try to get that one in first because I know if it goes, the others will go easily. I said I have flipped these things around before because the pot come down even worse on a different truck all right so those are going in fine we'll get on the other side here and these are a locking nut and again we'll have to take our 15 and Get on this other side and hold it. Snugged up. Okay, so we're gonna hold this, get this torqued to 35 foot pounds. Okay, I'm slipping here. I don't have my wrench. Check this one. Then we'll get on that other side and we're just going to do the same exact thing. Okay, so we did get that filter changed and we got it topped off of oil here. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and crank it up and check it for leaks here.
Okay, so as you can see, no leaks there. Everything looks good. And, uh, you know, other than the um, prying the, the old gasket off there, which that's every one I've ever done, it's been that way. It's like it's just glued with some really good adhesive. Uh, just the cleaning the parts and stuff up, not too bad of a job. So, uh, anyways, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. As always, I invite you to subscribe, and thank you for watching.